Okay, we're going to continue with this fire and smoke tutorial, but this is just a brief session because there's something I wanted to mention about these particles here. So let me see, I have the divisions at 145. Let me just drop this down real quick to say 30 so we can see what's going on. And I run this here from the beginning. You can see the smoke's being generated like this, and it's all tending to go upward. All right, so. So in case you're not familiar with it, this is similar to the, what um, I use in my floating particles tutorial. In fact, I'm going to post a playlist here, or no, I'll post a link to the video here in just a second. And what that does, when it's, it's kind of use the exact same thing for fire when I set these particles. So down in here, the only thing that's actually emitting these particles right now is this, it's not even this rectangular object it's just the face on top right there actually all the faces down below it and on the sides are deleted right now I was just experimenting with things earlier and I had taken those out and I gradually kept taking them all out and all that was left was here and that happens to be facing upward towards let's see if we can go get it yeah there it is in fact if I go into uh, mm, let's see yeah there you go there's solid mode that's the only face that's active and the normal is facing upward for that so let's go take a look at the particle associated with it well let's actually let's take a look at the normals on this already anyway we'll come down here and look at the normals see there's only one normal on this face and it's pointing straight up like that all right well that really becomes important in how you design your particles and typically the way I'm working in here if you look at my particle system setup down here is that Let's see, where am I? There, oops. Go to my particles. There, there, I'm going to free the bake like that. And then you see I'm emitting it at a very small level in the normal direction, like this. All right, 0 0.420. So everything's going to be, if you had the whole thing as a square or a cube, it would be pointing outwards from each one of those faces. And yet it's still rising up. And then the other thing you have to do, you have to come down here to this gravity setting down here, drop that to zero so there's no gravity. I may have mentioned that in the previous tutorial. All right, so that normal setting is critical. But however, a lot of times I don't use the normal setting. In fact, most cases I don't. I use the X, Y, and Z emitters. I mentioned this in several tutorials, but I'm, it's just important to know in case you haven't seen it. And that is, you always should be looking at your local axis in this case. So in this case if I was to take this and turn it to zero like that right and then if I win the local axis if, to emit these particles I'm going to use local it's going to be negative Z so it's going to have to be negative 0.42 like that let me rerun it again and there it is it's emitting at the same rate right so that's really this really gives you the greatest control because if you want it going another direction so maybe I'm doing negative Z there and I want to go back that direction a little bit so maybe we're going to do a little bit of negative X just a little bit you know so like negative point one and then Y so I'm going to do just point one and Y like that so it should be emitting them upward but moving them that direction towards that back corner over here as well. Sorry, so do that. Let's see if we can see it. Just a little bit. Can't really get enough. Let's see if we go to the side, see if it's actually moving it over. Maybe that's not enough. I'll do it a little bit more. Let's do negative point three and point three. And this these values come into play a lot for a lot of other work that I do. It's really fun. All right, let's see. Let's see if we could turn it to the side. So it's going up, and you can see it's moving away from the center now. So it's over here, and then it should be moving towards this positive Y local axis as well. And it appears to be moving that way. Let's look at it in front. Yeah, it is there a little bit as well, but just you can't really quite tell because it's bo it's bouncing up against the boundary of the domain there. But there you can see sliding to the side, so that gives you a lot of control for you know, certain effects as you might imagine. Okay, well that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.